We have already used Boolean in the if statement in the past. Basically, you use them to check conditions that, that are happening. If it is true, then you do something. If it is not true, you do something else. So together, we have four types of objects we can put into a variable container. Integers that follows a statement like this. Number equals to 5. Floats that follows a statement like this. Uh, FL equals 4.3. And strings that has a statement like this. Sentence equals you have smelly boots. And booleans with a statement like B equals to false. Sometimes in your program, you might want to check what type of a variable you have. This could be done easily with a command type. For example, if I write type number, in the past, our number is a number, number 5. And when it returns, it says int, meaning that it's an integer. If we try type num, it will return that it's a float. Basically, if you put the variable between the parentheses, it will tell you what type the variable you've got. Now that we understand what variables are, the next question we want to answer is where do they go? And where are they recognized? Let's see. If I start talking about this girl named Jennifer, chances are you know a girl named Jennifer also. But we probably are not talking about the same Jennifer. The Jennifer that you know or I know are called local names. They are local because not everybody knows about them. Or I can start talking about George Washington, Einstein, Picasso, Tom Cruise, Britney Spears, Paris Hilton. Now we are probably talking about the same people. These names are called global names. They are global because everybody in the globe knows about them. With programming, we have the same situation. You might have a couple functions talking to each other. How do we know if we are talking about the same variable? After all, variables are also names. We use the same idea with local and global variables. Let me give you a quick example. This is a program with two parts, a function and a main program. If you look at the main program, it will call the function God. God makes Jennifer equals to pretty. After you finish the function, it goes back to the main program and try to print out what Jennifer is. You might think that the program will print out pretty, but this is not the case. The program will crash because the main section doesn't know who Jennifer is. You see, if you look at the program, Jennifer was first introduced inside the function, the function God. This makes Jennifer a local variable, which means that only God knows who Jennifer is. The main program has no clue, so when you tell the main program to point out Jennifer, it gets confused. In order for the main program to know who Jennifer is, the function must specify that they are talking about global Jennifer. To do so, inside the function before Jennifer was introduced, you want to write global Jennifer easy enough. This says that you're talking about the Jennifer that everybody knows. So if I run the program now, the main program will recognize Jennifer and print out pretty. Let's run it. You see how now the main program recognizes Jennifer as pretty, all because God said so. There's a catch too with this global and local variable. You see, only things that are created inside the functions are local. If things are created inside the main program instead, it is automatically global. You can kind of see the main program as Hollywood. Everything created from Hollywood is automatically famous. Everything else created somewhere else, oh uh, well, you, you, you don't really know it. So if I go back to the code and switch the sequence, I will create Jennifer first and make her beautiful inside the main program. I will then print out Jennifer 
in the function without declaring it global. You will see that when we run the program, it will still print out perfectly fine because Jennifer is global variable now. So let's run the program now. From this, you see that you must be very careful with the variable. If you create an inside function, you got to make sure that it becomes global if you have to use it later. But if you create it inside the main program, then it's automatically global. The thing is, when you get out of the function, nobody knows who Jennifer is. As a matter of fact, even the function itself forgets who Jennifer is. So when you run the function again and ask the function who's Jennifer, they will tell you that they forgot. At this point, you might be thinking, why don't we just make everything a global variable? And I agree with you. It's much easier to program with lots of global variables. But it is actually bad programming habit. This is because the computer uses up more memory for global variables. You might only need to use the name once and never goes and use it again. That's kind of wasting the memory. But the decision is yours. Using global variables makes programming easier, but you will slow down your programs. I guess it's all a trade-off. OK, today we started with looking at the programs we're going to create next lecture. I gave you a little show and tell on the city of Madrid. Then we looked at basic four types of variables integers, floats, strings, and booleans. They're like objects that we can put into the variable container. In the next lecture, in order for us to program the application, we will need to use some global variables. So make sure you understand this concept before you move on to the next lecture. For your homework, I want you to go back and review the concepts of global and local variables and how we can declare them and how we can use them. And that will be all for now. This is Che. Until next time.